This is why we don't make any friends. He saw a few Indians and he want to call them. And it's our date. You want to call other people on our date? What's the point? It is awesome. Hello, hello and welcome, welcome to one more episode of The Creator Couple. My name is Indes. My name is Perry Cree. And today we got a huge streaming drama that is happening. And uh, oh my god, I can't wait to talk about it. Like it's it's been such a spicy, spicy week. Hmm. Also, like there is another things about like the culture of Twitch and how moderators and uh, streamers they go about it. And you know what? We're also gonna talk about like how it's hard for us to like to keep yeah. this consistency, not only on content but also in our lives. Yeah, it's been like like this week was like pretty rough for us. Yeah, you know? that's true. But you know, yeah. diving into like the first topic uh, about today, man, Hassan Piker, which is uh, probably, if not the biggest politics streamer on Twitch, had like some uh, controversial uh, commentary about yeah. like streaming. Mm -hmm. And uh, th this is a problem that exists when you stream for uh, such a long hours, right? That uh, a lot of times you're going to get clipped out of context. Yeah. And, uh, it is a big issue. So, what did Hassan said? He said that, um, you know, whenever you stream for nine hours straight, mm -hmm. he's like, your social battery just gets like so drained that afterwards you don't feel like to do anything, you know? And uh, and then he compared it to a real job, you know? And that I feel like it was the mistake, right? That's like, where the drama began. Yeah, that's where the drama <laughs> began because, you know, uh, he basically was trying to say that... <laughs> Imagine you do a presentation for nine hours straight, mm. yeah. right? Afterwards, it feels like you don't have any social battery to communicate or to deal with people afterwards, right? Yeah. So streaming is pretty much that, especially if you stream for all these long hours. You know, it's very taxing to be speaking for that huge amount of time. So that's where, like, the problem started you know, like, which is, like, this is a valid point, and probably most streamers, they, they agreed, but whenever, like, he compared, like, to a real job, and he said, yo, I also did, a, you know, a sales job, mm -hmm. and because of that, I know how it is, yeah, you know, yeah. and even though, like, you do sales, but then you, you have some breaks, and you have, like, all these things, so I think streamer is harder than a 9 to 5. And I feel like this is where it got clipped out of context because people just picked up this phrase mm -hmm. and it made a whole mess in the in the streaming. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I can understand, but it can be someone else's opinion. Maybe it's harder for him, you know, and it's not a generalized perception about the real jobs. But uh, on Twitter, like people... Like, even if you say everything right politically, people, like, go insane. And there'll be some people, they will find some fault on it and then make a huge drama about it. But what do you feel? Like, uh, do you think do you think the comparison is valid? Uh, I feel like any job, it is very... has its challenges and its yeah. benefits, right? Of course, I feel like overall, is being a streamer, has more benefits than uh, than challenge, but uh, the the reality is like on a, on a, on a real job, everyone like is uh, most of the times in equal footing, right? Like yeah. if you work in a retail store, more, you have my job, and we have like the same struggles and same challenge. Yeah. When it comes to be a streamer, it's not like that, right? Hmm. Uh, the, the the beef that people have most of the times it comes like when they looked at one percent of the streamers, which yeah. is Hassan, like he's in a very privileged <clears throat> position. But then they compare like with the old sphere, which is like 99% of the streamers, you know, they are struggling, you know, but the 1%, they are multimillionaires. Yeah. You know, it, it is such a vast landscape and it's like really tough uh, for small streamers even to speak up, you know? Mm -hmm. So if I feel like streaming, if you get to do it, it is a privilege, yes. If he has a challenge, yes, like any job, you know? Mm -hmm. So I feel like he was not saying that, uh, and it, this is the whole misconception, is like, he was not saying that streaming is hard, harder than the real job in the overall thing. Yeah. What he said was just like, yo, one of the challenges that there is about streaming is like, after nine hours of streaming and speaking continuously, you probably don't want to speak or, you know, interact or be in a social gathering 
for a for a few hours, and then mm -hmm. you get drained, and it, it, this is like pretty, you know, understandable. Yeah, but I I feel uh, this is also you need to keep in your mind that you're communicating with people on which like most of them they don't even consider the content creation a job. You yeah. Know? So imagine uh, the comparison which he was trying to do. They don't understand it, you know, because it's it's very new thing for them, and they don't even consider like a streaming as a job. So for them, it's like how the hell you can compare real job, you know? Yeah, I I feel like what people do is like people see from the perspective that you know this guy is sitting on this chair yeah. for so many hours, he's watching videos, or he's doing commentary, or he's playing the games. And yeah. uh, that's what I do in my leisure time, you know, like yeah. that's what I do for fun. That's what I do as, as a hobby. So if I get to do that, that as a hobby, then you don't have the right to complain because I, you have what I always wish that I could have. Yeah. And during my nine to five, I'm doing something that I don't like or I like, but, you know, it seems like the, the grass is always greener on the other side. And mm. man, it is a very privileged position to be is if you get to, you know, to, to a position where you can have like to be that one percent yeah yeah mm -hmm. 500 viewers yeah. 1000 viewers that, that's where you start making a living like yeah. a, a good living out of streaming but that, that, that's so rare yeah that is like extremely rare and uh I, I feel like as a streamer and i'm learning more and more over the years you know like it is a double-edged sword that uh, you want to open up but people really don't care you know, mm. because people are there for the content and to be entertained. And yeah. um, especially, uh, I, I mean, the bottom, and like, in Ukraine, like really starting up. So we don't have the privilege yeah. that uh, all these streamers have, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so pretty much like we do it because we're passionate and we want to to create content as it is. But we don't we don't have the the the, the privilege that like these one percent streamers have like of have millions of dollars or even like to have you know the money to sustain yourself and all these things right mm -hmm. like we hope to get there but we're not even there but still I feel like people don't really want to hear about that because yeah. from where they are standing and I have empathy to towards those people right <laughs> like they are on your stream. They are there at night, probably are tired from their uh, nine to five, you know, or uh, or or not, you know, mm -hmm. like maybe they are employed and they have in their issues, and so th they see someone that they watch for entertainment, and all of a sudden, like that person starts saying that you know streaming I I is so hard, blah 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 blah. Yeah. And I think they get a bit disconnected, you know, because like, oh, what, what are you saying, bro? Like, like, the, do you know how is in real life and all mm -hmm. these things, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, so uh, for me, it is it is a complex situation to be because you know you feel like sometimes you want to be more real with your audience and open up, but other times you you feel like. Will people even understand? And I think if they understand, are only the ones that have like emotional attachment. Yeah, to you. no, and uh, I don't think it's about the emotional attachment. I think people who ever tried content creation mm -hmm. or uh, they are into the, this beginning phase, I think only those people they understand mm, because some they people, have the perspective. Yeah, because some people they will understand because they really like you, but they won't understand truly like what it is, you know. And the, also like a lot of people they don't see the uh, the whole year like six seven years or five years or whatever year it takes to reach to that point they completely they completely ignore that phase of life it's like a, you work for a company to become a ceo but before that you'll have to work for seven years for free yeah <laughs> you know yeah. that's like a, that's the very simplest way i can say and the even if you work for like five years for free for that company it's not sure that you're gonna get the ceo job you know? yeah, you, you don't it's work just like for that. Yeah, we're saying like if you're trying to build a business and, uh, you know, you're not working for free, you're still doing, but you're not earning yeah, yeah. As, as you think you can earn as yeah. a business owner, right? Yeah. And uh, it will take you a lot of hours invested, mm. you know? It's like w one of the things my, my, my friend did to me was like, okay, how many hours did you work these past two months? Okay, how much money did you make? <laughs> and then you divide the hours that you, you did and you worked for the month of money you made. And then you probably in the beginning are making like 25 cents an hour. Mm. 
mm. which like it's very demoralizing if you yeah. look at that way. Yeah. Uh, but that's just how things are. You know, th yeah. things take time to invest, and in, um, you know, you have to invest a lot of time at first for a possibility of making a return down the line. Right? Yeah. No, of course, like there's a lot of things that uh, you know, even if you if you don't make it, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things you get because you, you now you know probably how to create content you understand marketing you understand like how to do thumbnails you understand video editing like you as you go you understand and you develop skills that otherwise mm -hmm. you wouldn't but when it comes to streaming like in content creation as a whole like it's like learning eight jobs at once right and uh it it, it is it is harder than people know and but i i understand that what what he's saying like only when people try to get and create a YouTube channel yeah. or uh, to start streaming or all these things, then they will realize how actually complex it is yeah. to to make it. Yeah. So you know, like this was the 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 whole the whole drama that that happened, and I feel like once in a while, like these. <laughs> This topic emerges because one big streamer will say something out of context, and uh, and then th this this topic is not new. It will always be yeah, here. It was here since the start. Yeah, it's it's true. Like apart from streaming, uh, people who are content creator in other platforms, they're not considered as a real job, even if they like like earning a lot of money and they're buying houses at the age of like twenty three, twenty four, which is a good thing, like mm -hmm. really good thing. And before it was not that possible, but it's still you don't take it seriously. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't understand that. And also, like, there was this uh, quote I was reading. I was editing this one video and I read this uh, person who said that, uh, that the most, the, the most toughest job which considered very easy is content creation. Mm. <laughs> and I was like, that's so true. I, I feel like it's because of the public perception. You know, yeah. like, when, when you... <laughs> When you look at someone that works in a retail store, you know, or, uh, you know, like a, he does a, a dirty job, you know, yeah. like a sewer cleaner, like so they are some maintenance, you know, like they, they are very, they are jobs that are low paying jobs. Uh, and unfortunately, they, they go through a lot of struggle and challenge. Working at McDonald's, for example, in the fast mm -hmm. food chain, like it's one of the hardest things that you probably will have. Because it's like low paying, mm -hmm. highly stressed, you know, probably you don't get the respect of anyone. So it is fucked, you know, yeah. it, it is like very bad uh, it, when it comes like to, to, to the job. And it's probably one of the hardest jobs that you, you can have mm -hmm. for like very little return. Right. But uh, when it comes to content creation... All you see is the the blinging stuff. Like you only know about the people that are creating the millions and uh, they are making the 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 videos. Like I, I am, I bought this. I bought everything. But, I got a new yeah. car. I got this. So when you only see the the one percent, it's very easy to oh you do content creation. Oh, okay, oh probably you're a millionaire. You know. Or, no, but I have a question. Like, do you think like this is also the fault of content creators showing off their money? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. In in the, for since the beginning they didn't share what it takes like behind the scenes uh, and and like most of the content creators they literally show off their lavish life and the all because that that's stuff. what gets views you know that's because also true. it's like they are selling the dream that's also true you know yeah so whenever you you're selling these very outrageous things and you know oh you have the freedom to do these and you can buy these and I'm oh, look at me traveling all yeah. over the world like. That's content the, for them. Yeah, that, that's content so, yeah. for them, and that's what gets more views. It gets more traction. Yeah. So, of course, people will have like that opinion that man, it, and it is true. If you yeah. can make it to that level, which is like only very few people can actually do it, it is, it is awesome. Yeah. It is awesome. You know. So, the, like I wanted to talk talk about this example that the there there are like few women. They make these haul videos, which is like they buy stuff and then they show it on camera. It's a video. It's a haul mm -hmm. video. And a lot of people had like complaints about it. Like uh, why are they showing capitalism and all that stuff and mm -hmm. extra consumption and all that stuff. But uh, there was this one creator. She said that 
these are the kind of videos they work really well on my channel and many other creators channel yeah so so they so, buy <laughs> clothes and they show them how they yeah. their feet how they are the, yeah, yeah. And uh, definitely, it helps some people, like in terms of like buying if they really want to buy. But uh, that's how it sells. That's what it sells, and then uh, whatever sells for them, they they. Yeah, you and know. Uh, you know how how do content creators they make a living by exposure? Exposure yeah. it comes in views, it comes in followers. So you tend to do things that will take you through through that route. You yeah, know? because because there you are like people who are watching are also. From from the consumers, you know, so if you're watching it, you're enjoying it, and then I don't know why you're complaining about it. Yeah. That's also one of the things. Uh, it's like but, it, tell me, tell but me. Uh, no, no, tell me. No, I feel like it's easy to have empathy because you yeah. can see the behind the scenes when it comes to you know a, a retail store job or any other job. You know, mm -hmm. like th those are. Oh, it's called old professions. There's not a lot of behind the scenes because, like, it is it's, right in front of yeah. you. You are seeing more or less the job. You understand. It is very easy to have empathy and understand. Yeah, that is tough. When it comes to content creation, is like these two these two sides. Yeah, you only see the content that people expose, which most likely is the content that they know that you're gonna like, but they rarely expose to the to the public. What it goes behind the scenes, which mm. is like like the ninety percent of the the, the mm. work, the struggles, and all these things. So yeah, you're right. Uh, this is a consequence of uh, content creators. Like create, content creators created this bubble for themselves, you mm. know, uh, through showing content that people want to watch. Mm. No, but uh, also like every time. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, so you know, like. Now going a bit, you know, like if we talk about uh, the, these, uh, what happens in the backstage, and uh, let's talk a bit about like Twitch culture. Yeah. And uh, if you guys don't know, like Twitch culture is a Twitch is a platform that you do live streaming. Yeah. And uh, as you grow your channel, usually you have people that are uh, they want to be part of your community and they are, want to have a more active role. Mm -hmm. And there is like these roles is called moderators, right? They exist. Uh, they exist like in, on Reddit. They exist on Discord. They exist uh, on Twitch, which are people that want to be part of the community, and uh, they want to make a dent in it. They they want to you know they want to support you, and um, uh, financially or with their time, you know. Yeah. And both are very valid. So what do they do? You know, they they help to organize the content. They help. <coughs> the the main one is like they. We'll keep the chat clean. They mm -hmm. will keep moderate the chat so the chat doesn't go wild. Especially as, as you grow like to uh, hundreds, like he gets like very, very wild, yeah. very quickly. So these people will help you. So there was like this situation that very recently uh, about a Twitch streamer that uh, you know it is a small streamer, you know, in a still in the scale of like the the one percent. Um, okay. She's doing very well, but uh, but still like she's not like blinging in when it comes like to money financial freedom mm -hmm. right so uh w when you're small you you tend to have like a a, a more uptight community because there's only a few people <laughs> you hang out with them every mm -hmm. day and the live streams are very easy to develop like some very social relationships yeah you know yeah uh, but but also the opposite, you know, like even streamers they get attached to to their viewers and to the people that they used to help them or the people they used to watch their streams and now they don't. And I'm also a victim of these. Uh, I'm trying to get better at it, and I think mm. I did over the years. I kind of you kind of have to learn these lessons. Yeah, as it goes, I, it's just part of it. Yeah, but because you can develop like very strong bonds online. You know, you're not their friends. They are not your friends. Like, but uh, you know, m a lot of it, the 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 parasocial thing comes into place. So there was a situation where uh, the this streamer, you know, after probably a few years that maybe she may she knows this person and being a super supportive person mm -hmm. financially and also <laughs> with their time, mm -hmm. uh, she gave their her address. You know, she gave the the address for of uh, her house also, right now also he was like uh the mod right yeah he's a twitch mod right so he's for someone her, that channel. she felt like she can trust okay. you know like he's been here for a while you know mm -hmm. 
is always on the stream. Every time you go on their stream, is always there. Not only modding, but also interacting. Mm. Uh, always writing, always typing, always making the the, the stream better. And uh, if you ever stream, you know how important like this is. Mm -hmm. uh, the financial part is also there. You know, yeah. like especially when you were very small, you rely a lot on what people call whales. You yeah, know? yeah. Because most of the income for you comes from those people. Yeah. Yeah. Ho like, hopefully, you're going to have a very split where everyone comes and maybe one gives, like, <laughs> they subscribe monthly. Yeah. But the majority, it is this way. Mm -hmm. Especially for small streamers, they like, they have a, a few subs, and then there is someone that kind of has, a, like, a profound attachment to you and f and likes to support you, like, yeah. in a bigger scale. Yeah. Even with the big streamers, this happens. They just have, like, such a massive, bigger scale that the impact is not that big. Yeah, right? yeah. Also, they have, like, way more... Uh, People... Way more people, way more sources of making money. They make from Twitch, they make from YouTube, mm -hmm. they make from brand deals, they make from products, they make from merchandise. Like they have like so many income mm -hmm. streams that uh, a small streamer doesn't have. Usually, the small streamer mainly relies on the stream itself and the people that support, yeah. uh, which is a very vulnerable place to be. But going back to the story, so. She gave the address for this Twitch mod that is from another country mm -hmm. to buy her something, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which probably is going to be cheaper. Like, it happened to me, like, uh, to to a point that I remember being with one of my mods. And I was comparing prices of, like, the mics and all these things. And, uh, uh, man, in Denmark, it was so much cheaper. Like, uh, we're talking about, like, four, five hundred mm -hmm. euros. That even if he bought me and he sent me... Mm -hmm will be so much cheaper because I will just pay for like 50 euros of shipping. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'll save like 450 euros. Yeah. You know, this never happened. Mm -hmm. I never gave my address and we never reached to that point. But this is how can you understand that, especially if you're a small streamer, every dollar or every euro uh, matters to you. And, uh, and sometimes like you feel like, man, I can trust this person with my personal address. Yeah. And you kind of you kind of build a relationship like we have our few people who come to support us and we kind of trust them. Yeah. And imagine imagine it happens like uh, to us something like this situation. Yeah, exactly. It it, it gets like uh you get in a in a very tricky situation. So yeah. what happened was that after she gave to him, the the thing that she asked never came. Right. Mm. And uh, no, then then she went uh, out of the country to do like some IRL streams mm. in other countries. And now she's back in her home and she received a package. Mm -hmm. And that package was a sweater that the guy bought for himself and sent to Ooh. her house. But why someone sent sweater for himself to her house? I mean, I, for me, it is it is the 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 oldest trick on the on the book. You know, like whenever you go to someone, like oh, let me go there to get my my oh, shirt. Or... I did it by mistake. Uh, no, address. I don't think it was a mistake. I think it was like very well intentionally, and oh. it was super creepy. You know, it's creepy as fuck. Yeah, it, it is. She she definitely freaked out. Especially if you are a, a female streamer. Yeah. Especially. Yeah. Like, female streamers have this thing that I feel like they have to be even extra cautious. Yeah, uh, yeah. When, when it comes to these things, right? And uh, and they say, oh, I'm just saving money so I can gift you more subs. And Saving money how? It's not saving money. Like, it, it is not about <laughs> that. Of course, like, he's using it as an excuse. But yeah. this is like when the, the, the line... And you always have to be protective about yourself and your your personal information, right? Yeah. So you you no should matter overshare. how much you trust. Them. Yeah, no matter how much you trust, yeah. especially if you never met them uh, in real in life. life. Yeah. Especially if they are not your friends. Yeah. You should definitely be very aware of like the consequences that can happen, mm. and. Uh, I I feel like in this case, even you know, like if you have someone that is like really invested in you. You know, and no, financially, it's their time and mm. all these things. You have to consider all the possibilities. Yeah. You know, uh, like, why is that? Especially mm. like, if it is a guy 
and there is a female streamer, you know, you have to understand, like, okay, this is not normal, mm. okay? Most of the times, if someone is spending, like, $1,000 mm -hmm. every month on you, mm. or maybe once in a while, it is not normal. Yeah. Like, people, Normal people don't do that. So you have to understand... No, but uh, sometimes what happens, some people consider, like... Uh, they are supporting you because you are a streamer and you are entertaining them. Some people have a lot of money and they like to support, you know. Yeah. Your brain doesn't go in these kind of directions uh, most of the time. And not every supporter is like this, you know. Yeah. But there are like a But, but I feel like definitely. as a streamer, you always have to be cautious. Yeah. It doesn't matter how it is. Because I, but, e even if it's well-intended, mm -hmm. Uh, it can get to a point where it gets can get like very creepy, mm. right? So I feel like the 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 lines that usually we shouldn't cross is definitely sharing our our address. Yeah, you know, most people in most famous streamers, what they do, they do a PO box, which is a post office box. You know, like so, just the chat can send the 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 donations, the the package for you know, yeah. if they want to give something to a streamer. To the to the post office, and then you go collect, and it. then you go and collect it. You know, but doesn't come directly to your house. Uh, yeah. There are some service now, like Tron and uh, and Amazon wish list also, mm -hmm. that you they don't give you the address, so you can buy directly from the wish list, oh. and uh, they won't have uh, access to the address. Okay, but I I have to tell like this story that uh, I think at least one viewer. Uh, knows my address, you know, and it actually has been very supportive because there was like on my second stream or something mm. or my third or fourth, like like right in the beginning, mm -hmm. I went on Amazon. Oh, I remember that stream and there was this address. And there was like address. literally my address oh, on yeah. top of the Amazon bar. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, yo, um, he whispered me on Twitch and he said, Hey, you're you're literally leaking your uh, your address right now. Yeah. So leaking. be careful. Yeah. And th I learned that lesson like right uh, right there. I don't think I ever open up again yeah. Amazon on stream. Yeah. And I always have to, like to be cautious. Like in especially as you grow, some people I I saw like the other day like you can create like another profile on Google Chrome. Mm -hmm. So whenever like a, a form appears or something. And you, you you know like when uh, you are gonna autofill. put like the yeah the autofill right yeah. the autofill on the, on not only on the history yeah. but also the autofill on the form yeah. like if you put like the the, the email now is like full name uh, address and all these things and gets auto completed yeah. so also those things you you gotta have to be careful so so there's a few things like you, you should be careful but uh, when it comes to this Twitch mm -hmm. Twitch mounting what, what do you think about I think I was I was thinking about it. And I think, is it like a very common on Twitch? Because I have heard like from a lot of people, these stalking things and all that stuff. I never heard about like these things happening to Instagram influencers or YouTubers. Maybe one, two YouTubers I have no, heard. No, they, they happen. But do you think like uh, with Twitch, they connect, like they build a deeper connection because it's a different form of content. And then it happens like more often. Mm, no, no. I, I Yes and no. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes maybe accelerates because you're going to spend, you know, like if you're going to watch an uh, Instagram or like, it's very quick. Like we're talking about 30 seconds reels, right? Uh, when it comes to YouTube, maybe you can watch multiple videos, but yeah. it's going to be like 10 minutes at a time. But on Twitch streams, you literally can spend hours. Mm -hmm. So definitely it can accelerate like that uh, uh, feeling of the, the per social side. But it also happens in other ways. In uh, yeah. like on Instagrams, is like people get fucking harassed on, on DMs all the way. Yeah, but like DMs is like different, you know. But this is very creepy. If someone, if you have like this feeling that someone can stalk you at your home mm -hmm. or your, your address, you know. I, I feel like right now, only probably you know. Only big, once you get to a certain size, yeah. you always gonna have, and even the other day we were listening to Queso and, uh, and Jinxie, you know, like 99% of people are cool. Then there is the 1%, which is yeah. very creepy yeah. and uh, it creates problems. So it, I, I think it goes all the way, mm. you know, uh, and you just gotta be cautious for that 1%. Mm. And also be aware that just because there is this 1% doesn't mean like 
you Everyone should not is. give the the opportunity to connect with with other people you yeah. know like yeah uh and we are all human you know at the end of the day i i don't feel like it's it's our fault or in in any case it's just like sometimes yeah. you, you just choose to believe that in the goodness of, of people yeah and people sometimes they have good intent mm. but as it the time goes on now they hold information from you yeah you know and once they have that information you don't know what's going to happen in six months you know or yeah. one year maybe and you know you that's understand? true like i was thinking about this whole situation if it happens with me like it will be so restless to live in the same house you know mm-hmm. and uh, especially if you are uh, denying that uh, don't do that or if you're taking like a certain action and you start uh, uh you block the whole communication with that person yeah it can trigger that person mm-hmm. more and that person can do like a lot of damage you know yeah. so it's a very restless feeling in the in these case right yeah people were saying that uh oh she should ban him you know no, and banning r- is r- not r- r- a... okay so i don't know like this <clears throat> behind the scenes i was yeah. just literally reading the reddit comments when it comes to it uh there, there were like some people that were saying oh she should uh, she was already thinking about removing because it was getting like too invested on the stream mm-hmm. and or like too possessive i i i listen this is like comment section you yeah, know like yeah. so it take it as uh as it is mm-hmm. But it can happen, you know. Yeah. You can get to a stage that uh, even I, I, I had like three or four cases of like viewers that they were, uh, they were not my mods, but yeah. you remember, like yeah, they were they like were. super, super invested and super cringe, uh, to a point that uh, they were feeling like they owned the streamer and they owned the stream, you yeah. know. So I literally had to ban them gladly they didn't have my my address but i completely understand what like, you're saying uh, yeah like uh, like if you ban them they can retaliate yeah and do something bad to you right yeah and also blocking them is not an option because they have your address mm-hmm. you know so you can block online but you cannot actually really block the yeah maybe excess. they'll start sending you flowers as an excuse or something or you That's know even more <laughs> creepy <laughs> So please unban me and you know you receive flowers oh, every God. day. That's like a very that, weird that, situation. But let's be honest, that's even like the 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 less harmful thing, you know? No, no, but it's creepy. It's it's not a nice feeling to receive flowers uh, for someone yeah it's someone whom you don't like you know yeah it's not a good feeling yeah it, it's I it's breaching the, like that uh that level the line the pushing the line of content yeah. like, is it going over the line right and it's a very scary situation because you don't know the limits of that person mm-hmm. you never met you know so i think the best thing is to change the house in this case yeah I for example say. streamers like you know aiden ross xqc you know, like these very, very famous ones, they literally are always jumping from house to house once in a while. Mm, because of this reason? B- because of like DDoS attack, because of like security mm. issues, all these things. Or you are, for example, like a, a, a son or a Amaranth that everyone knows where they live, mm. but you just have like a full team of security outside all the mm. time. And that's really expensive. It is really expensive. Yeah, for for that you'll have to be the top streamer, you know. Yeah, yeah, because you won't be able to afford like yeah. these things, you know. Yeah. So definitely, it is uh, again like we we're talking about like one of the the issues in challenge, and that's one of them. For example, yeah. this is one of the challenge that comes like with online fame, and you have to you know be aware and protect yourself, and uh, you know always like be cautious to not you know put your address or where you live out there. I, I remember like one time you, you took like this story of like from your balcony oh, in yeah. Delhi yeah. and you were popping off back then. And I said, listen, don't do that. You know? Yeah. Don't do anything that will remotely even close to figure that someone figured out where you live. Yeah. And I, I'll tell you this, something happened with me because I was going to this cafe or something in Delhi So uh from the rickshaw auto rickshaw I took a small clip for the story mm-hmm. and the rickshaw was fast okay so it was like a, it was crossing the cro- uh, the road mm-hmm. and the, I posted the story because also I knew that I won't be here like for long mm-hmm. 
and the someone commented the exact location mm. in the yams like are you on this the, this junction or yeah. you were on that junction i was yeah. like that was so fast and someone literally justified or recognized the whole place yeah. and i was like holy shit that's so scary yeah i i feel like it's fine for you to start shooting at in a location that okay can yeah. be your city yeah. but it's not like near your your house yeah or near your your place right yeah uh and you always have need to have this in mind yeah. you know it's just, all, it's, yeah. a, it's something that it, you just be, have to be aware yeah and i just wanted to say like by telling that uh, incident that people can recognize the place yeah you know if they are from the same city it's not a very tough job if you are putting the sunset and there are a few buildings it's very easy for them to reach to that place yeah you know yeah, yeah. if there i see are any maps, streamer there or are, like things yeah any youtuber uh, posting some something here in, in in our hometown yeah. i will recognize immediately <laughs> you yeah, know yeah yeah and that's just how it is i'm so familiar with the place and uh, yeah. I, i know the neighbor i know the city mm. also it's not a, a big city so it's like even easier yeah um but yeah this is like definitely one of the things that uh, i hope like she she she's going to be safe but yeah, it, this uh, is something that small streamers and big streamers uh they deal with it every day and um you just got to be cautious at don't don't put your your personal info you know your full name you know your address your like maybe don't bring a lot of your family yeah uh, into it i don't know like it's like something that uh, because at the end of the day you want it's for their protection yeah yeah you know it's not uh, only for for because, yours because you made the decision that you want to be online and yeah. you have to live with those consequences but when it comes like to harass i i think it was i don't know if it was jinxie or someone else like you're saying like their sister now started to get oh no no it was a an, a a youtuber and especially when it comes like to create like certain content about like controversial things mm -hmm. he created a, a video about this thing and uh and people oh, about that court case that you you show me like that uh, uh, youtuber family that they were oh. harassing the kids yeah, yeah, for yeah. content yeah so he made like a controversial video about it like just mm -hmm. exposing the the the, the family and uh, Jinxie? Uh, no 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 uh, other youtuber oh, like okay. a more like documentary okay. uh, essay things mm -hmm. and um he started receiving like death threats and uh, like they found the the location of like uh her si his sister and yeah it gets oh, like, like the family yeah oh. so there is like this thing that uh, people can pay online like 30 40 50 euros or something mm -hmm. uh, especially in the US i don't know how it works uh, here But uh, in the US, you can do this. You, you you can pay a certain amount of money to have access to a certain public data, yeah, uh, of that person, and uh, it, it can get weird, you know. Okay. So th that's why it's like hard. Like you gotta be careful whenever you trace uh, the, these things, yeah. and uh, a lot of people don't know how it is until it happens to them. Yeah, and it's stalking is real. Sometimes what they do is if they know one of your family members, they just stalk them and then they reach to you. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's exactly. even insane. So, exactly. Yeah. But uh, you know, let's uh, let's move on to uh, to another topic and let's talk another about struggle. Uh, this is uh, so we're gonna talk a bit about consistency. You know, yeah, because consistency in life is the thing that makes you grow, you know, and it is the thing that is required for you to just keep pursuing to to reach to the next level of whatever you want to do, right? Mm -hmm. And that's something like uh, we struggle uh, personally, right? Yeah. And uh, in the, now we the more a bit about like the relationship side, right? For us, we have, and we always had like these these cyclical, uh, you know, downfall. Yeah. You know, yeah. every every month, like it is a huge struggle uh, to go through it. Yeah, it's like a, uh, we are doing really good, like for a few weeks, and then gets to a point where something happened, like uh, you know. And the that personal happenings starts affecting the consistency, yeah. you know. And uh, I don't know, like, uh, if uh, we will be reacting the same if we are working for other people, you know. 
but uh, that's the main struggle of like uh, working with someone you know or you're working with your couple your your partner in mm-hmm. this sense so this is something which you're really struggling with yeah i i already you know share shared with you that i feel like if you're working for someone else definitely you will will not yeah. act in this way yeah. you know uh it, it comes like from a very privileged side yeah i don't know it's a, yeah definitely it is like a, a very psychological thing because if you are if you're working for someone else like there were times when i used to work for other people uh i am really pissed or something or some other stuff okay then i go go to work and when i come back i i didn't think about it this whole, in this whole process like uh, when i was working mm-hmm. and when i come back home it's very easy for me to distract myself from that uh, topic you know yeah. so it also gives a lot of distraction but if you are working together as a couple or with your brothers sisters or whatever it doesn't give you time to distract yourself mm-hmm. because that's your personal life and then also you have the same people to do with professional life so your brain it gets really hard to distract from the personal issues mm mm-hmm. and to think like that you're working for someone else mm-hmm. you know what i'm trying to say yeah yeah it's like uh, everything blends into one yeah it's and like, you don't see the where should you put the line you know the distinction mm-hmm. no uh, for me i know where the line is it's just like most of the times uh it's not respected you know like and i think uh, also uh, let's give a, a bit more 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 context here so for us we are we are a couple and we we be first we are a couple and second we yeah. now work together yeah. right so the, here's where the issue comes in you know because we like as you're saying because we are a couple first whenever like you're feeling sad or you know or uh, personal problems emerge for you mm-hmm. also they will affect the relationship and because the now the relationship is affected then as a consequence it segues into the work yeah So it's like it's like this chain reaction, you know? Yeah. So but if you had uh, like you said a, a normal job, you know, you have your personal life and then you have your work life. So these things are two yeah. very distinct things. And in that sense that work life helps you to distract from these issues and take it in a lighter way, yeah. you know. But in this case it gets worse. It keeps getting worse and worse if you don't know how to, you know. Yeah. So it, it's not like, you know, uh, you want to talk about like the issue that that is happening. Uh a bit we nas. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So what has been happening between us that uh, we are working together on something and uh, what's happening with me is like uh, I am not able to give my 100%. Like I help in I help uh, with editing and certain stuff. but then i'm not able to fully involve my brain in it mm-hmm. you know and the what happens is like then you feel alone in it because uh, you feel that you have been doing the all thinking part and all that stuff uh but what's happening with me is like why i'm not able to do that because i have like a uh, certain things which i'm passionate about and the uh, when i uh, finish editing and everything like that and i go back to that phase and i start doing research and searching for that part which i'm passionate about mm-hmm. but uh, you suggested me to bring that uh, passionate part in this uh, work and let's mix it together so we show the both sides of the people personality yeah. okay but i am having a really difficult time to merge these two things mm-hmm. you know I don't know if I'm explaining it right. Yeah, uh, I I feel like just the, the, for the a bit more context, right? We are working on the on this creator couple, but yeah. also we do the live stream together and uh, th- that's a big part in big pick up on that live stream. We do the videos, but most of the times we end up like discussing on the stream uh in you know even on the podcast in previous podcast uh or maybe even this one. <laughs> things yeah. that uh I tend to be more interested and along the way I see I always try to merge like okay what is I my interest and also your also interest 
But the same way I'm not like bringing all my geeky stuff, you know, mm-hmm. my gamer stuff into the, the stream, you're also not bringing maybe like your your, your fashion, uh, you know, your, your your gossip things that you, you really are passionate. But mm-hmm. this also needs to be a, a decision that, okay, where is the line? You know, yeah. w- what is the line of something that we can both are slightly interested or at least we can, you know, talk about it, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, so I'm actively thinking about this and uh, I see, and this is like the, 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 the biggest issue, like looking from like a third person perspective, mm-hmm. it is when I say that I feel alone in this project is because I see it as our project mm-hmm. and you are taking it more like, yeah, I'm just going to go on the stream. I do the editing and I, it's just like, it feels yeah. like I'm working with a, with an assistant, you know, that goes to the job and leaves the job. You know, it doesn't feel like it's an equal, equal thing, mm-hmm. you know, and it's not only about like the interest part it's also mm-hmm. about the effort. Okay. So I think these efforts also come naturally in a way. And uh, also, I feel like like most of the part is uh, overpowered by your kind of interest mm-hmm. in it. And I, I am not blaming you for that because I have like, I always had this thing that I uh, bring, I come up with some interest of mine and say it. Like I do like three, four times. And if the other person ignores it or slightly don't like, uh, they don't, they don't like uh, look at it or something or it gets uh, ignored. Mm-hmm. Then I take this step back and then I never come back yeah. to, with, with my point. So mm-hmm. in that sense, like I work like a very submissive sense in a way. So that's what also happened with me. So what happened is like I started missing what I'm passionate about. Mm-hmm. So I was seeking free times to go and check out those things, mm-hmm. you know. So that's that's why like I was ed- editing and I was like, okay, let me go back to the things and I, which I am really passionate about, you know. Mm-hmm. I stopped giving my 100%. Yeah. But it's not that I don't uh, look at it like it's not mine, it's yours. No, that's, you, you, that's you, not what I, I think about. Like, that's mm-hmm. not my intention. But uh, yeah, this is something which is happening, you know? Yeah, it's like those things that even though you're not saying or thinking, all the actions are saying that. I can, I, yeah, I can understand that yeah. actions, maybe they reflect what you think yeah they are. no because like you know especially when you're starting out you know a channel uh mm-hmm. content creation a company a business a project a side project you know uh, a hobby wh- whatever it is you, you're starting out and especially when you're you have a, a partnership yeah it has to be very you know well defined what are the responsibilities and i think in that sense we did a good job mm-hmm. but then most partnerships they they break not because uh the, the the responsibilities are not well defined. Most of the times it's because one side is putting more effort than the other yeah. or the value that they are bringing to the table, it is completely unbalanced. And uh, so the other person starts feeling, you know, man, I'm working so much. So that why am I working so much? So I'm just going to stop working so much. But if that person stops working so much, then it like it's just like at the end of the day, it's going to be doomed. You know, the yeah. the company, the channel, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And because, you know, I have like a past experience and uh, I know because I've been <laughs> in the phase that in like right in the beginning, whenever I, I tried to start, I knew that both of us, we, we're not like even our 100%. Mm-hmm. And that took us to waste like three, four years of the, in the company in the beginning because the effort was not there. You know, mm-hmm. so it's very easy to waste time in a in a startup, in a business, in a in a content. If you just take it like as a oh, this is my nine to five. It like it is not like that. It will not work because you have to put like so much more yeah. investment. Like we're going back to the the putting the uh, uh, upfront investment of time, and then you you probably will collect the rewards later on. Yeah, so I, I understand what you're saying, but. That also comes naturally if you are really, really passionate about, you know, or if you're thinking in the same way, the way you are thinking, you mm-hmm. know, I think this, I think we need to figure it out, like how to fix this, mm-hmm. you know, because uh, I think it will be very unhealthy to continue like this, you know, yeah. 
for you, for me, for bo- for for the work, bo- for for everyone. Yeah. So yeah, we definitely need to fix. I don't know how. I like. I no. I like it, it, it's like you always like. Here's like. Um, whenever we start having discussions, is you never come up with a with a solution. You know, is I'll say, oh, but I don't know how. Like, I it's like you're very good at identifying problems or creating more problems, but then <laughs> it's it's very hard for you to come up like with with just a simple solution, right? Mm-hmm. So then you you get like super confused. And uh, from my side, I I look at the problems and I think about the solutions. So the solutions usually because they are mine, they tend to you know shape the project more into my side because. Yeah. If I'm putting 90% of the input in, in ideas to solve issues or whatever, of course, it's going to start sh- be shaping in, in this way. No? Mm, for, for me, like solutions, they, do, they doesn't come very easily. Mm-hmm. You know, every time I think about solution, I get even more confused. You know, it feels like everything is foggy around me. Mm-hmm. And it is a very weird status of mind, you know. So I don't know, maybe... I I should find a different way to find a solution, you know, mm-hmm. maybe writing it down or some other form which I'll have to search online. Yeah, yeah. But it I, doesn't I, come very easily, and that's why I struggle with it. Like I, I everyone, do, I ask you to do like, for example, sketching, because like you're a visual person, and whenever everything is on your mind, mm-hmm. only on your mind, you get confused. I it's it should be all already like you know, easy for you to at least understand that about yourself. Like so. If I'm a visual person and I start like, okay, uh, these are the things and I, maybe I can see it. And then it's about practice, you know, like, it's mm-hmm. not like you have it or you don't have it. Like, you just learn as you go, like, and uh, you try things, you know, like, but these, w- w- what sometimes, like, makes people get into these very stagnant things, like, you not only not think, but also, even if you think something, you don't try to do it, right? So then it's like, oh, okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? But then I, I don't do anything. Mm-hmm. I don't even try to do one simple thing maybe that came to my mind. So it, it gets pretty easy to get like that repetition of like, you know, problem, solution, trying out, problem, solution, trying out, you know? And um, it, it is a skill. It's not like, oh, you're born with it or you're not born with it, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and uh, definitely the, this probably like com- comes back to... To, to a lot of things uh, but definitely that, that that's why i i brought like because we are having consistency problems not only yeah. consistency but like quality of content problems yeah. and based on my experience you know i'm looking at it and i'm like damn this is not going anywhere hmm. you know it isn't going anywhere because the level of effort that is required and you're saying yeah but effort comes like uh, out of passion yes no, and no I, like I, I don't agree with i never yeah. said that Th- then what are you saying because like you're saying like oh it's hard for me t- to do that if i'm not passionate about so pretty much like you're linking both things no 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 mm, i don't think i i was saying that i mm. was like the focus and all the i don't know how to put it in the words but uh, whatever you said was not uh, i was trying okay to say. so it's like you're passionate about other things so so l- let me try to phrase it in, in this way maybe it'll, it'll be slightly more clear uh-huh. so whenever you're doing this because you're not giving your 100% right it's like you're feeling like you're not as passionate about it right as a consequence okay whenever i was doing it i never felt that mm-hmm. but then uh, we were having conversation and we thought about it mm-hmm. and then i thought about okay what do i do when i stop editing when i finish editing or finish whatever my you know uh job is mm-hmm. like and i was like i always go back to things which i really like mm-hmm. you know and the Maybe that's the reason I'm not able to focus on the other side of the work mm-hmm. rather than whatever is like uh, given to me, you know. Yeah. And uh, and that's why we're, uh, you know, we had a big mm-hmm. conversation and we are thinking about like merging the passions, maybe. Uh, yeah, or merging the passions or the just splitting up, you know. Yeah. Uh, probably we're still gonna do like this podcast, but maybe like 
when it comes to the to the channel, maybe or it, because like whatever it is, this limbo doesn't work, mm. you know. So it's like, or we find a solution where we both work together and we yeah. give it a shot, or it will never work, you know. So for that, we we should split up, and it it, it is completely fine. It is it in a way is sad, but um. That, that, that's just how it is like in yesterday for example we were also speaking about like you said something oh one thing that i'm enjoying to to work together is because i'm also learning a few things along the way right and um and then <laughs> at the end you said oh but i can also learn uh, by doing my own things and and then i i just got up and said man okay uh, i'm out like i can't i can proceed with this conversation hmm. but now i'm going to try to explain the 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 reason why you're always going back to doing your own thing and if you remember whenever you left college right uh, maybe you always wanted to do your own thing you wanted always always wanted to have like the freedom but even though if you even if you don't wanted to you didn't know where to start mm -hmm. right but whenever you you went and you have the first jobs what did happen along the way you worked with other people together with them and you start learning a few things you did your own things but you learn you you learn by watching you learn by by having that that conversation that feedback mm -hmm. so this is the same situation one of the things i was saying like i feel like right now you're being impatient that you that you don't understand like what 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 is the benefit of this you know and one of the benefits it is like okay am i learning also from working with, with, with together you mm -hmm. know and if you are working and involving like that if you are alone you probably won't you know there are a few things that you probably want because mm -hmm. you're gonna be by yourself you know mm -hmm. and there is only so much that sometimes we can especially when we're starting out you know unless like you go to youtube and a a anyways like it doesn't mean like you you are required to work with someone to to get better mm -hmm. it is first it's just like way faster you know you're probably gonna and like there is like this thing that is the the peer pressure you know like i'm working you're working so we're gonna work together and you it kind of functions better when you were alone you don't have that pressure so it's like yeah you kind of get things a bit soft mm -hmm. and when it comes like to exchange and uh, like stimulate each other when it comes to like exchanging knowledge and uh you know having conversations will be much much more productive and that's why maybe you were feeling like maybe i'm learning a few things and i'm getting better but it doesn't mean like you cannot no, replace was, this with youtube videos for example yeah it was also mostly like uh, when we work together we are working more mm -hmm. than working independently yeah so, because of the peer pressure yeah i don't know like uh, i think we still need to figure out like this thing and come up with the solution because i don't think like uh, this way it's gonna work in the long run you know mm -hmm. and it won't it's not good to be like uh, working half-hearted and yeah you, you're, you're, very, you're very emotional when it when it comes to to jobs you know to to work and uh, and and that also gets in in a way, you know, mm. it, it gets in a way uh, like of the consistency. Going back to the consistency part, like I always were speaking about, is to be consistent, you require to have like we're speaking about having a purpose, having a mission, having these things. But whenever we are getting driven by our emotions mm -hmm. our emotions will always fluctuate like that's how it is like we are humans you know so like something else has to be the guidance mm -hmm. you know it, it, it can it, because even i i remember there are times like you're more passionate and other times you're less passionate other times you're more hyped and other times you're less hyped but yet the consist that there needs to be like a goal or or something that drives you to because you even like if you we have like a big a big passion about something you know over time after doing it after three months of doing exactly the same thing mm -hmm. that passion will run away I'll, I'll promise you that yeah, yeah 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 that that I am aware of yeah so there there's need to we need to find like something even 
more that goes above our emotions mm. you know so yeah we're definitely trying to figure that out yeah. consistency it is the key for the, for everything especially when it comes to content uh to content creation like to this podcast to the videos uh to everything in life you mm. know that's that's like the key for everything and we are struggling with the, like these communication issues uh emotional uh, roller coasters yeah. and uh, you know and also when when it comes to communication it is between us you know like you hold back a lot but i feel like you're now opening up yourself a bit more for us to realize what are the problems but like because probably th these already happening was being happening over the, the 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 past weeks and i start noticing but you don't speak up so it gets like it reflects you know where it's not between us it is also between us but it's on the content you know mm -hmm. those things start reflecting on the content and start reflecting on the analytics and start reflecting on everything mm -hmm. and uh I think also the audience gets that, you know. So this is like the 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 third la in the last part of the consistency, and uh, we're gonna go and we're gonna dive into our Patreon section. So if you guys reach until here, thank you guys yeah. so much for the for watching this, and uh, I'll catch you guys on the, the Patreon one. on the next one. <laughs> Peace. It started like three weeks ago. Yeah. You had like your, uh, your monthly, you know, falling down. And since then, things have not been good. I, I feel like you're just... <laughs> 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 you will pick up and use anything possible to create an insecurity. And it is insane to see. <laughs>